Greetings, scholars, families, parents, educators. I'm John Baylor. Thanks for being with us this month for Ask John Anything, brought to you by On to College with John Baylor. Simple mission. We help schools and families create two- and four-year college graduates with minimal debt. We do that with our test preparation and also our college counseling system at ontocollege.com. And every month we throw at you fabulous nuggets to help you win this college admissions game. Remember the goal. Right college, right price. Right college, right price, and kaboom, the likelihood of getting to be that college graduate with minimal debt just skyrocketed. So this month, successful college visits. Successful college visits. Look. If you're going to go for four years, spend the four hours. If you're going to go for two years, spend the two hours. We got to visit these colleges, but we got to do it successfully. So here's how to visit your next college really successfully. Well, that goal is ever present. We want to go to the right college at the right price. We want to graduate on time with minimal debt. And when we say minimal debt, we mean no more than $5,000 borrowing every year. No more than borrowing five grand each year. And the student does the borrowing. The student does the borrowing. We don't encourage, we, do, we highly discourage parents from doing any borrowing. So the student borrows at most five grand a year. And so if the family has, has to borrow more than five grand a year, typically that's the wrong college. We got to go to a place that fits our goal, and that is to graduate uh, with minimal debt. Now, we, when you get to the campus, split up. Parents are on their own recon mission, students on her own recon mission. Now, during the campus tour, maybe you stay together, but you split up, you get your own impressions, then when you reunite in the vehicle, take a few moments and then take all your notes, write all your notes down without sharing your ideas. Because if you each individually are coming up with your own ideas and you write them down, you want your, those opinions don't get skewed by what you hear from your parents, what you hear from the child. Boom, write them all down and then compare notes. So split up, Take notes when you're done and only then uh, compare notes. And then take those notes and ultimately put them on a big spreadsheet so it's really easy to compare what your impressions were of Middlebury versus what your impressions were of University of Michigan versus what your impressions were of University of Iowa, wherever you're looking for. Northwest Missouri State, Colorado State, whatever it happens uh, to be. And be sure to, to, while you're on this day, write down the names of anyone you visit. And of course, what do you do that night at the hotel or when you get back home? Handwritten thank you notes, handwritten thank you. You can write your way to huge success in your life by just sending a lot of handwritten thank you notes. Now, when should you go on these visits? You've got the how, a little bit of the how. Now, how, when should you visit? Freshman year is not too early, but ideally you want to visit when the college is in session, when the college is in session without missing much high school time. So what does that mean? Fall break, President's Day weekend if the college is in session, spring break. Find colleges that you can visit when they're in session and your high school is not uh, in session. Visiting a college when it's in session versus a college when it's not, I, you know, for example, summer is a totally different experience because you're interacting with students, you're getting a real feel for the rhythm and the spirit of the campus. Now, with my daughter, we visited a bunch of colleges in August because it just it wouldn't have worked with her busy fall schedule. So we went to visit a bunch of colleges in Ohio. It was a fabulous three, four days together. But we recognized we were primarily looking at buildings and speaking with adults. And there were a few students that were there that were working with the admissions department to show us the experience. But we knew it wasn't exactly as it would have been if we had been able to go visit in October, in September. Ideally, visit when the college is in session without missing much high school uh, time. And before you get there, you want to plan it. So, for example, if you're going to go visit, uh, if you're interested in doing musical theater, you want to visit with the head of the music department. You want to visit with the head of the singing uh, department. Or maybe they have a musical theater department. You want to visit with that person. Those are the kind of things you have to set up ahead of time. So, before you go, you want this thing planned. You want this thing planned, and that can be handled via communication, phone, or email with the admissions department. So you make it clear ahead of time who you are, your interest in the school, when you're going to be there on what day, and whom you'd like to visit, if at all possible, uh, while you're there. How many schools can you visit uh, on the same trip? Well, when you make trips to see schools, choose colleges that are near each other so you can visit multiple schools in multiple days. I used to think you could do two every day. 
tiring, tiring. At least one per day and at most two per day. We took a whole week and you know seven or eight colleges in five days, that's a lot. So be reasonable in the number of schools you think you can visit, especially if you're gonna be traveling significantly each evening to get to the next uh, college. Now, how do you visit this uh, when you're there? We talked about splitting up uh, with your parents and you, of course, wanna take a campus tour. But a lot of families think that that's sufficient, that now I've got a real feel for the college. Campus tours are often led by very attractive young people who are ecstatic about their college. You're not going to get a lot of, uh, you're not going to get a, a full understanding of the school if that's your primary access to the college. So when you're there, we want, of course, to tour a residence hall. That's probably part of your campus tour, but maybe you go in and check one out uh, with a student that you just sort of meet outside the residence hall. So you get a little better feel for what the dorms are beyond the single dorm room that you saw during the campus tour. And you want to visit with students. You want to visit with professors. You want to visit with those who lead activities that you're interested in. So again, ahead of time, contact the admissions folks. Can I have lunch on campus? And when you go to the lunch, split up from your parents and go sit with kids. Go fit, sit with students, ask them questions. What questions? I'll share that with you in just a second. And um, what professors do you want to meet with? Professors who are involved in a, a major you might be interested in. And then leaders of activities. I can give you an example. I, I knew this young woman a few years ago that took our class and she wanted to go to Washington University, St. Louis, and she wanted to do theater there. So she set up a meeting with, the, with the, the head of the theater department. And as she described it, she got there, the head of the theater department said, look, I don't have time. She hadn't set it up ahead of time. And, the theater, and so she just went there spontaneously. And the professor said, look, I don't meet with students. I don't have time right now, but okay, I'll give you a moment. You know, one hour later, after she talked about you know, what her dreams were and asked a lot more about Washington University St. Louis, theater department, he basically said, I'll do whatever I can to help you get in. She got in, she was the diva of the stage there for four years. So these meetings with professors, ideally set up ahead of time, but maybe even spontaneously, can really make a difference, especially if you're trying to get involved in activities. If you just show up and think you're gonna play on the baseball team, it probably won't happen. You gotta make sure that that coach has a spot for you and has met you ahead of time and has seen video and has said, you're one of our guys. So. I, the campus visit is a great time to interact in person with a coach, with the head of the band, uh, or um, with a professor in a major you might be interested in. And if you're interested in financial aid, and most of us are, we're trying to graduate with minimal debt, be sure to have a parent visit with a financial aid person while you're there, just to clarify exactly, okay, what is the total cost of the school? That's tuition plus about $10,000, $11,000 per year, the non-tuition costs, room, board, books, fees. So the tuition plus ten dollars and then how specifically can we lower that cost? And that's grade scores, typically in one extracurricular. Grade scores and one extracurricular. And then ideally you show up at the college knowing ahead of time, what is your budget? Let's say the family's budget is 20 grand a year times four years. I mean, that's a generous family. And then you go to the financial aid department and say, look, what's our possibility of getting the price down to 25 grand? We'll chip in 20 and the, our child will only pay, will only borrow five. And, Maybe our child can earn about four grand a year during the summer. So, you know, what, could, what can we do to get our total cost down to like 25, 28 grand a year? And they're gonna say, okay, need-based aid. Well, you know, we're not sure we can get our EFC, our expected family contribution down that low. What can we do with merit, with grades and scores to get our total cost down to like 28 grand a year in this hypothetical? And find out from them what it takes. Okay, it's a 28 on the ACT, it's a 1450 on the SAT. Um, if, you, if it's a Division three school and, and uh, you offer extracurriculars, often they'll throw money at you uh, for that. So be sure in that financial aid conversation that if your family's looking for financial aid, you get a real concrete understanding of how their scholarships um, work. And you can set all this up ahead of time. So, bottom line, when you're there, you wanna be able to kick the tires. You want to get a real understanding of what it'll be like there. Now, a lot of that is stats, numbers, what's it going to cost, how many students in a freshman English class, those kind of things. But a lot of it is visceral. How do you as a student feel there? A lot of it, I'm a big believer in going with gut. Um, but you got to make sure if you want to major in engineering, they've got 
engineering. You want to make sure that you're going to have to play on the baseball team, all those things. So some of it is objective, but a lot of it is subjective. So when you're there, make sure you know what the overall price tag is ahead of time. Tuition plus about $10,000, $11,000, and find out when you're there how you can lower the cost. Have a good idea before you get there, and then confirm you've got a good idea. What are the scores? What are the grades it'll take to get the merit-based aid to lower that cost? What kind of available aid is there? Merit. What kind of work study do they have? Other type of aid that might be available. It's all about value. Getting a price point that's affordable for the family. We don't just say yes to the Lamborghini dealer. dealer no. We want to make sure we've got the right product at the right price that allows our family to borrow no more than, our student to borrow no more than five grand per year for at most uh, four years. Ask questions. Here are a couple of fabulous questions. Freshman English, everyone's going to take it. What is the average number of students in a freshman English class? Ideally, it's like 12 or fewer, but if it's like 250, that's a big lecture hall education. Two types of college educations. Big old lecture hall educations and small scintillating seminars. Big lecture hall educations, small scintillating seminars. Big difference. Total, they're both called college. Big, big difference. Here's another great question. You're sitting at lunch with students. You just sat down. You want to talk to them about school. Ask them this. A couple years after you graduate, when you come back and visit your alma mater, how many professors are you going to visit? A couple years after you graduate, when you come back and visit your alma mater, how many professors are you going to visit? Now, if they look at you like, what are you talking about? I'm going to go hang out at the Phi Kappa Lau house. That's, uh, that's a school where the professors don't have a lot of interaction with students. If they say, whoa, I've got so many professors have changed my mind, I'd, I'd have two or three I'd have to get in touch with. That, that's how important they are to me. That's a school that really cares about its undergraduates. That question, it can be a great litmus test to, to determine to what extent those professors are really interested in teaching undergrads as opposed to doing research, publishing, bringing in grant dollars. To what extent are they interested in teaching the undergrad? You, as a shopper for exquisite undergraduate education, want to know. To what extent will those adults care about you when you're there? That question can help. When you come back and visit after you graduate, how many professors will you look up and go say hello to? Keep your eye on the goal. We want to graduate with minimal debt. One side note is that sometimes if you really know what college you're going to and you know you want to major in English, for example, maybe that major English or the humanities might be putting on a preview day, that'd be a nice thing to go visit. Sometimes they throw money at you um, for, for just showing up on that day. You want a place that's going to feel like home. So that means you want to visit in a manner that just gives you the information you need so you know it's affordable, but you know it reaches here. That it's a place, wow, I love this place. I think I could be really happy here. Questions. Any questions coming in as I Look at our producer, Adam. Yeah, we do have one question. Uh, Jerry asks, do the same college visit guidelines apply for graduate school as they do for undergrad? And are there additional things to consider if I'm looking for a good graduate school? So, should you visit graduate schools the way you visit undergraduate institutions? That's a great question. Uh, graduate school, I think largely yes that uh, when you visit graduate school, you want to be sure to visit. You're about to give them two, four years of your life, so be sure to give, you, you spend at least four hours, uh, meet with the professors. But in graduate school, those adult relationships, those tenured professors you're going to be working with and four, they are critical. So you really want to spend not just an hour chatting with a professor in a major you might be interested in. If you're applying to graduate school, you want to really get to know those personalities you're going to be working for and with because those relationships will largely dictate whether in fact that graduate school experience will be worthwhile. Now that's for uh, getting a PhD. If you're going to law school, you're going to business school, yes, it's a lot like an undergraduate visit and I would just argue that in those instances uh, it's very easy to take on crazy amounts of student loan debt. You make sure you go to the right one uh, for you and that's usually a top-ranked law school uh, or a top-ranked business school, otherwise a local law school that won't cost you nearly uh, as much. But for undergrads, you want to plan it ahead of time. You want to do a lot more than just go on the campus tour, split up from your parents, take good notes, 
uh, sit, go to a, at least one meal, get a feel for what the meal, the meal plans are and what the food is like, and ask these kids, uh, you know, how much they enjoy it, but also to what extent are these professors really engaged in their life? To what extent do they love their classes? And just listen, to what extent are they talking about things going on in class? Or are they just chatting about, you know, the big old barn stomp on Friday night? Or, you know, what Sally's saying about uh, Billy? I mean, you, of course that happens, okay? But if they're talking about philosophy class, or they're talking about electrical engineering class, that's a school where, yeah, you're going to get the socializing, but you're going to get rigorous, life-changing education as well. All right. By the way, I pulled all this information from our Platinum Guide. Our Platinum Guide, which is one of our, our books that you receive with our college counseling system or on to college counseling system. And in the Platinum Guide, you learn a lot more than how to do a good visit. It's the five keys to writing great college admissions essays and scholarship essays and by the way essays are so critical now especially for high dollar scholarships and for highly selective uh, colleges and where the best merit-based scholarships can be found what colleges are throwing the most money at kids for grades and scores and how to estimate your efc your expected family contra uh, contribution if, if you're going to fill out a FAFSA you're looking for need-based aid and everything you need to know to get into the best college at the lowest cost which is step one to graduating with minimal debt. Check out a lot more at onthecollege.com. We'll see you next month for more Ask John Anything.